What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is Too Deep. In our previous video, The Sons of God Part 1, Who Are They? We went into great detail searching the scriptures for a definitive proof of who Genesis chapter 6 refers to as the sons of God. This event recorded in Genesis chapter 6, 1-4 through 4, to be more specific, explains that the sons of God slept with the daughters of man. Though the Genesis 6 account was a good start, it didn't give us the full picture as it doesn't definitively express who or what the sons of God were. This led us to 2 Peter chapter 2, 4-10 through 10, and Jude 5-10. through seven. These two passages of scriptures, coupled with a few others, led us to our answer. The sons of God were celestial angels that left their celestial form to take on the form of man and live like man. This then led us to the question, why would God refer to them as sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 instead of just plain angels? What's so special about the sons of God? Well, the term sons of God actually is quite a rare occurrence in the Bible. After Genesis chapter 6, we really don't hear about the sons of God until the book of Job. Now, some who disagree that the sons of God are celestial beings and hold to the belief that they are the righteous sons of Seth don't like the mentioning of the sons of God in the book of Job. I wonder why? Could it be because it contradicts their beliefs? Well, let's take a quick look at what Job has to say about the sons of God. Now, the first two instances of the sons of God in the book of Job are basically saying the same exact thing. So we're just going to read the first instance, that first chunk of verses, and you can read the second instance, the second chunk of verses, if your heart so desires. You can find that in Job chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Now, let's read the first chunk. Job chapter 1 verse 6 through 7. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. So a couple of things I want to point out here. According to verse 6, there was a day that these sons of God had to come to present themselves before the Lord, which is really important to keep in mind. Here's something else that's really important. The author of the book of Job adds that Satan went with them as well. After that verse, the author then focuses on Satan and his conversation with the Lord, which is why we didn't really read all of that. It, was, it wasn't it was important to this script. So this then tells us that the main reason the sons of God were mentioned was so that we could have a timeline again, because they weren't the actual focus of this verse. Satan was. It was about his conversation with the Lord and his accusation of Job, which is why we have the book of Job. Now, the very next verse is verse 7, and it's the Lord asking Satan where he came from, which he then tells God that he came from the earth. Now, this is very important because remember the verse before said that the sons of God went to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also went with them. If Satan is on the earth and he's going with the sons of God who are presenting themselves to the Lord who is in the third heaven, then the sons of God, at least the ones that Satan is hitching a ride with, would have to be on the earth at the same time as the day that they have to present themselves before the Lord. If none of the sons of God were on the earth, then how did Satan enter the third heaven? Now, this is very important because there are rules and regulations to entering and leaving heaven. You can't just enter and exit heaven as you please. If you could, then heaven wouldn't need windows and doors and all of these different things to be opened, as we see in Psalm 78 verse 23 and Isaiah 24 verse 18. God also wouldn't ask Satan, almost as if he's surprised where he's been. And yes, I know God can't be surprised. He knows all things, but it's almost as if... He's surprised when he asked Satan, from where have you come? In verse 7. So there had to be sons of God at that time on this specific day on the earth. This is important because it's a part of the timeline. Why? Well, what does Genesis chapter 6 tell us about the timeline of the sons of God in their time on earth? 
Here, let's refresh our memory real quick. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. When man began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive and they took as their wives any they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of man and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. They were on the earth at the same time that they had to present themselves to the to the Lord because this is a time that they were falling for the daughters of man. Now, before we go any further, I just want to clarify something for you guys real quick. These celestial angels, they didn't have to come down to earth to corrupt man's DNA. It actually had nothing to do with corrupting man or man's DNA. It was it was about their own lust. Why? Well, both Mark and Luke recorded discussion between the Sadducees and Jesus. Now, the Sadducees, who don't believe in the resurrection... They were trying to trip Jesus up with a question about a widow who was married seven times. They ended their arrogant argument with the question, whose wife will she be in the resurrection? Now, what I want to focus on is Jesus' answer to them in the next three verses. Mark chapter 12, verse 24 through 27. It says, Jesus said to them, is this not the reason you are wrong? Because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor, nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. Jesus makes the statement that in the resurrection, the righteous become like angels. Not that they become celestial angels, but that they become like them. Why? Because they will be like celestial angels in that they will no longer marry or be given in marriage after the resurrection, not after death, after the resurrection. Now, humans do not become the celestial beings that we refer to as angels at any point in time. So we can again understand that these sons of God are not the righteous sons of Seth that somehow became like celestial beings after death. Why? Because that's not a biblical belief. What does happen is that during the resurrection, that is when Jesus returns for his bride and carries us away to heaven, we receive an imperishable body in the twinkling of an eye. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51 through 58. This is what now puts us on an equal playing field with celestial angels as Luke so elegantly puts it in Luke chapter 20 verse 34 through 40. What I love is that Jesus he specifies that he's talking about the angels in heaven. This is Jesus acknowledging that there are now celestial angels that are no longer in heaven, as well as human angels that are allowed and even encouraged to marry. For more on the celestial angels that are no longer in heaven, check out our video, Revelation chapter 12, War, Why Did Satan Attack? Which you can find under our Too Deep category. For more on non-celestial angels, check out our video, What Are Angels? which is also under our too deep category. So with that said, the celestial angels didn't sleep with human women to corrupt man's DNA. They did it because they lusted after them, just as Genesis 6 tells us. One more time, it had nothing to do with corrupting man's DNA. Now, back to the main point of our video. These celestial angels, the sons of God, were on the earth at the same time that Satan joined them in presenting themselves to the Lord. So Job chapter 1 verse 6 through 10 and Job chapter 2 verse 1 through 8 are actually referring to around the same time period as Genesis chapter 6 1 through 4. Now, if you're like me, you're wondering why did the sons of God present themselves before the Lord on this specific day? Again, why didn't God just refer to them as angels? What's so special about them being sons of God? Aren't all angels sons of God? Well, I searched, and I don't think they are. For instance, Gabriel is never referred to as a son of God. Neither is Michael, who is referred to as a chief prince in Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, as well as an archangel in Jude 9. 
So there has to be something to this name, sons of God. Well, if we keep searching for sons of God in the Bible, we'll come across Psalms 82, but it won't be in the same exact form. Psalms 82 says, God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Selah. Give justice to the wicked and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods, sons of the Most High. All of you, nevertheless, like men, you shall die and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the nations." This divine counsel seems to be the presentation of the sons of God that we were not privy to in Job chapter 1 and 2. And what are they getting in trouble for? Not judging the wicked, showing partiality. They weren't doing their jobs as gods. This could be why the earth had become so corrupt, why the earth had become so wicked and the, the hearts of men were so evil. Because the gods, they weren't, they weren't bringing judgment. They weren't doing their job as gods. Now, I want you to keep in mind that I didn't call them gods. God called them gods, not me. Let's read that verse one more time. Verse, verse six. I said, you are gods, sons of the most high, all of you. We recently did an in-depth study on the gods and how it's possible that there are other gods in our mini series, The Gods. You can check out part one, Are Other Gods Real?, under our 2D category. So that then begs the question, why weren't they doing their job as gods? This brings us back to Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 through 4 again, because couldn't it be that some were distracted by the beauty of the human women and their desire to be like man? So if then these sons of the Most High are the same as the sons of God, then why didn't God just refer to them as the same name? Well, I believe it's because God is already calling them gods, as well as reminding them of their place on the totem pole. Yes, you are gods, but don't forget that you're my sons, and don't forget how you're supposed to act as my sons. Don't forget how high up I put you. I put you as my sons. You are sons of the Most High God, which is what makes you gods. So God defines them and himself, and then he goes on to decree his judgment. He's like, I put you up this high, but now I'm going to bring you down low. So even though you are gods and even though you are my sons, you will die like man because now you were brought down from your godliness. God even takes it a step further and says that they will fall like any prince. Now, this is an interesting concept because God differentiates between the sons of God and princes. And What's really interesting is that the sons of God are being punished and are brought down from their level of authority, if you will, and God tells them that they're going to fall like any prince. Okay, okay, Ari, get to your point. Well, Gabriel actually refers to the princes in Daniel chapter 10, 10 through 14, as well as other verses and chapters. But in these specific verses, Gabriel tells Daniel that the prince of Persia withstood him for 21 days. In fact, if it wasn't for Michael, one of the chief princes, he'd still be stuck there. So princes seem to be a type of territorial spirit. And we get more into detail about that in our video, Territorial Spirits, What Are They?, which you can find under our Too Deep category. So the sons of God are gods, with a little g, which make them higher than the princes, possibly even higher than the chief princes, such as Michael the Archangel, as God seemed to lump all princes together in one category. Now, I just want to reiterate this one more time. I'm not saying that the gods are definitively above the archangel Michael. I'm saying that on the surface, that seems to be what Psalms 82 is saying. And this would need a whole nother video to go into and dig deep to really grasp what God is saying in these two verses in Psalms 82, which we just don't have time for in this video. So 
With that said, this would be the reason that these specific celestial angels are referred to as the sons of God, because they are the gods of old. Who else could be the gods but the sons of God themselves? This would also explain the sons of God's reaction to the foundation of the earth being laid. Here's the third and final time that the sons of God are recorded in the book of Job. I want you to keep in mind that this is God himself speaking to Job in these verses. It's not someone else. It's not someone else's interpretation. This is God himself speaking. Job chapter 38 verses 4 through 7. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars signed together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. This all makes sense why the sons of God shouted for joy at the laying of the cornerstone, which represented Christ and our salvation, since they are the gods that the earth was set under. So they shouted for joy at the sight of the redemption that would be given to the people they would one day watch and rule over. I just want to point out one more time that this is another verse that completely and utterly disproves that the sons of God were or could ever be the righteous sons of Seth because the sons of God were created before the earth was, which is how they were able to shout for joy when God laid the foundation of the earth and set its cornerstone in place. Now, I know this can be a little bit confusing, especially if you weren't raised in the church, how we have the sons of God, the gods, lowercase g, and then we have the son of God, Jesus made flesh, who is also God. So we'll talk of that in the next video in part three. But let's sum everything up for you guys in this video. The sons of God of Genesis chapter 6 are the celestial angels that fell for human women, corrupted their purpose, and took on the form of man so that they could be with those human women, and so that they could live as men. They were created on the first day when heaven was created in its entirety, which is how they were able to shout for joy when God laid the foundations of the earth and set its cornerstone. They are called the sons of God because they are the gods of old. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel, and until next time, God bless.